In this lesson, you'll learn about the indent feature. Indent is a feature that has not been in SolidWorks for very long, and it's not widely used by a lot of SolidWorks users. But it's a fantastic tool that can save you a lot of time in certain situations. I've used it on two components in the engine assembly. So to take a look at one of these components with me, why don't you open up the engine assembly in your infinite skills folder for chapter five. Within the engine, we have two manifolds, an intake manifold and an exhaust manifold. Both of these parts have used the indent feature to create a solid part based on a part created to represent the volume of air inside the part. Let's take a look first at the intake manifold. The intake manifold takes air in the two ends and distributes it to each of the six cylinders in the engine. This part was modeled such that the air inside the manifold was modeled first, and then the metal around the air was created. Let's roll it back and have a look. In this case, you can see that there are some in-context markers. That's because some of the sketches were created in the assembly and taken from other parts in the assembly. For example, sketch 2 is related to the cylinder head. The air intake for each cylinder was captured in this sketch, and then the path of the air was modeled using a boundary solid feature. The boundary solid interpolates between the beginning shape of the intake manifold to the output shape of the intake manifold. These air passageways were created for each of the three cylinders on one side of the engine. Notice that they are all reusing sketch two and using a derived sketch so that the starting sizes of all the air passageways in the manifold are the same size. Once these air passageways are in place, I created a mounting plate to mount the manifold onto the cylinder head. And then the indent features were used to one by one create material around the air passageways. Let's roll this back a little and see how this works in detail. The indent feature can be placed on your features toolbar through the tools customize interface, or you can find it through the insert menu under features indent. Indent always needs a body to start from, so it will never be the first feature in your feature manager. The target body is the material from the part that you want to expand. And the tool body is, in this case, the air passageway. So to start the indent feature, we really needed at least two bodies. One body of the actual part and another body as a tool body. There are a couple of things to specify in the parameters area. The first thing is the thickness. So when you create a indent feature, SolidWorks is adding material around an existing solid body. It's almost like the shell feature, except indent adds material rather than removes it. So you can specify a thickness. You can also specify a gap. If the gray body had represented something other than air, you might want a gap between the tool body and the actual part. For example, if you were modeling a plastic enclosure around a mechanism or around electronics, you might want an air gap between the housing and the electronics. So the gap or clearance 
is a handy option to have available. Once you create the indent feature, the tool body is still inside. You can turn these off or use delete body to get rid of them. And the other side of the manifold was created with a move copy body feature where it was rotated about the axis and copied. 